Heidi Ho, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are starting to work on a 2021 Honda Talon glass, all glass fold down windshield from Tusk, T U S K. I'll show you what we got going. So she comes with uh, all this uh, hardware, which you can check off, and of course the window. It's already got the piano hinge with the two vents. And, um, yeah, it's glass, and it's laminated, and it is heavy. Uh, we got all this hardware that came with it as well. And, uh, bag of nuts and bolts to spacers and hand crank knobs. Some more brackets. Pieces of weather strip, sticky weather strip, long weather strip, and another piece of sheet metal that goes somewhere and it's all boxed up in a wooden crate with styrofoam it's sandwiched uh, it actually was uh, packaged quite uh, securely so the first thing I want you to do is install these vent the vent uh, hardware items so that's the first thing we're going to do so anyway this thing comes crate crated up pretty nicely with some plywood and Two by twos and styrofoam and screwed together. Um, back over to your installation. Uh, you lay your thing face down. That would be forward down. And you hook up this vent. Uh, Dilly, you use lock nuts on the on the Hira and the Hira. You use the short 6M screws use regular flange nuts here your knob and you can see the orientation you got a friction washer in between um, once you get everything together you can start cinching up stuff uh, there's plenty of adjustment you want to make sure this one's not too tight so it does pivot to some degree once it's uh once you want to open and close it it does change a little bit of orientation as she rolls as you can see, this is a stop for maximum opening. It's arched this way. This thing is angled towards the glass. This side is angled toward the glass. Um, and uh, we'll go to the next step. So on these, um, I tightened this uh, lock nut and uh, 6M so it still pivots. Tightened it up till it didn't pivot and then just barely backed it off so there's no free play. All right, I'm gonna tighten up some more stuff. Okay, now I tightened up the crank knob set and this is, of course, all the slacks out of that on both sides. Now, you can start tightening these up, these two little ones, and then this has got more adjustment on it, so I'm gonna tighten these up first and then those two will or automatically orientate them themselves and then we should be good to go on this part that worked out well now the other side again i'm going to chart tighten these two lock nuts up 10 millimeter mm -hmm. and then uh, these will be the last two to tighten because it'll be oriented once and these have uh, once these are tight and these have the elongated holes so they can slide into position this is already tight this is already snug, uh, but not super tight. And um, we'll be done with this part, and I'm going to put some weather stripping on. Now you want to check for uh, smooth operation. Well, it looks pretty smooth to me. So, so much for the vents. Next, we got a bunch of little pieces of weather stripping. Oh, by the way, use 10 6M bolts, button head with a hex. Uh, Allen head. Now uh, there's 10 of these and they are all the shorties. You also have some 6Ms that are four long ones which we use for something else. So as you can see you got two of these shorties they go on either end and this goes on both sides right in that position. You get the longest piece they'll go in here and then again the medium and the short. Uh, I found it easier to start on one end and you keep working it. It does fit tight. If it's for some reason is spread apart, you can squeeze it together to make it tighter, but uh, 
I'm having the opposite issue. It's super tight. Also, you want the fat bulbous bulb side to face towards the uh, cab because uh, that's where you want your seal against your uh, original body part, Kyle. Well, I got some uh, previous video showed me it showed you turn signals and mirrors, which will be in the way. I'll have to remove these and then figure out what I'm going to do. I think I can get uh, flip this clamp around on where it's thin and go below. I believe there's going to be a gap down here. So I've decided to put the flap seal on first. This goes on the forward facing top edge uh, if you have a plastic roof from Honda. The reason I did that first is so I know where to put my weather stripping, which looks like it's going to be just inside those holes and left and right of the hole and the rib nut or whatever you want to call that thing. Machined uh, nut. So we're going to go ahead and do that next with the weather strip. Well, I don't like surprises, so I got my alcohol and a rag. I'm going to wipe where I'm sticking this stuff because I don't want any surprises from residual oil that may be on there from manufacturing. It doesn't look like there's any, but you never know. All right, we got that wiped down. It's drying now. Now we'll put the strips on. I'm going to do the long one first. So the beauty of me doing it my way versus manufacturer's way, if you put the flap on first, you have an edge to make a straight edge with your long piece. And then once you cut your long piece exactly to length, then your short pieces can be cut exactly to length and cut off at the edges. So much cleaner job. These two on either end and one in the middle to, re to loosen up the uh, roof a little. And uh, so we can get this uh, forward upper piece and oriented into these one of these three holes on both sides. Using two M8 bolts, one on either side, you're going to end up using the center hole of the three hole and get a pretty good seal after we crank her down. And after we tighten it down, we got some more stuff to do, of course, but we get a pretty good seal with that flap seal. And then uh, it looks a little wrinklage. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, wrinklage, you want it to not be wrinkled. So I'm out of order, but uh, you got to put this other last piece of weather stripping to give you along the top of the windshield inboard. And that way, when the windshield is folded up, uh, it will seal against the upper plate up here. Um, I guess that's so rain don't come dripping down on the inside, but let's see if we can get this thing going. And you'd think they'd put some weather seal on the outside pipes, but they didn't give me any for that. So, so I got these brackets in place. They are still loose. Uh, the bolts are a little shy. I can only get about a half, when I tighten these nuts down, I only get about half of the threads absorbed. So I'm going to have to figure out why we don't have long enough bolts. The other ones are way too long because they're used with the mirror. So um, the uh, Rocky Mountain mirror mount. So okay, we've got the three. Uh, M8s on either side, uh, makes total six medium-sized bolts. Um, they go through the bracket on the other side. Uh, the, is this L bracket? And and you got your nylon lock nuts. Um, then you can tighten up this stuff. Now my bracket bolts that they gave me are a little short so i'm gonna have to figure out what's the deal i'm only got half the nut threaded on there don't understand that one i have to call rocky mountain see what's going on at that point i undid the knob on the top you want to put your brackets on your bracket should be level with the rubber thing uh, towards the rear of the machine and you set them down you can either put some tape down or just mark your holes 
looks like it's going to be really close to this body line here. So anyway, I uh, marked the uh, rear hole with a pencil mark, and I'm going to drill that first and use the actual bracket as a template because if you're off, it's easy to get off. If you're just marking and drilling too blindly, uh, you'll you'll be off. So I'm gonna, I did that on both sides. The uh, rearward uh, made a mark with uh, pencil, and we'll get that drilled quarter inch. I've got the hand cranks tight. So it'd be in the normal scenario. Here we go. And using the uh, bracket as a template, uh, this should be level, so you know which one's which, and this rubber to the rear. Uh, we got these uh, longer uh, bolt washer, and uh, I think these are still number sixes. All right, I'm just gonna finish up both sides. All right, we did the pencil mark hole in the rearward uh, thingy. Rearward uh, tour of the cab, where the pencil mark was. We're using the screw in the bracket. Get it uh, lined up. I am using, uh, they call for quarter inch. I'm using one sixty-fourth uh, smaller than that. Now I can use this as a template for the front hole. And we know it's on the body line, so here we go. So anyway, I put my phone thingy back. I had to redrill the holes and scoot it rearward. And uh, Amazon special. Um, my Kemi Moto brackets will work if you put the thin bracket forward. So I got those back in. I need a couple tie wraps, but other than that, we are like the old school Jeep. Uh, the old school Jeep uh, from the MASH days. I don't know what model that is. So you got the hand cranks on the upper corners. They have a regular washer and a rubber washer. So you don't mar the finish. You fold them down. Your standoffs are so. And you crank it and hold it down uh, for hot driving and then cool driving. You crank it on the forward upper side. Uh, looks like it'll be waterproof to a certain degree. Oh, we got a wiper to put on. I just noticed that. Let's do the wiper. So what we got here is wiper. You uh, squeeze uh, right here where it's got the uh, grooves, either both sides, thumb and finger. You open this up. You stick your wiper through the rectangular hole, hook it onto the assembly, and latch it back. All right, I'm in position, I'm gonna lock it in. And then close the, the lid. You pull back nice and hard so it clicks, and then you close the lid. All right, so then you got your wiper. Wiper is supposed to be mounted with this. So when the wiper's vertical, this is vertical. And when the wiper's all the way horizontal up in the storage position, this is out of the way, so we'll do that much uh, self-explanatory you've got the threads with two rubber washers two metal washers two nuts you sandwich the glass in the middle you have to pull the plug out and then you have the little nut where it actually fits on the actual wiper that was too easy uh, again it's got a storage position position and uh, then it's supposed to be, uh, like I said, parallel with the blade on the handle. Well, uh, might be a tooth off. Depends what you're talking about. Parallel with the blade or tail with the arm. Pretty close though. Anyway, I'm going to wax my windshield uh, both sides, make it so much easier to clean. And if it's waxed, on a clean windshield, you won't even have to use a wiper. It'll just run right off. Um, have good experiences with that. So, 
you can adjust these threads depending on a lot of things depending on if it needs to be low or high or whatever anyway a little bit of an angle I don't know why but looks good so we will use uh, the down position today because we are in the 80s alrighty then so that concludes the installation of the of the glass windshield the only one I could find that folds that is glass laminated automotive grade and this is by Rocky Mountain ATV pretty nice looking windshield please feel free to share and like and more importantly comment and the most importantly subscribe subscriptions give me credit for my efforts with the YouTube family and if you wish to have alerts uh, as I always say, click the bell for post notifications from or for this channel, the Redneck Channel. Well, it's no duh. It's just Redneck Channel. And thanks for watching, and God bless.